surprising about the dollar's reserve status is that it still has it. You know, despite everything that, that we've done, uh, we haven't lost that privilege. But I think the current financial crisis, which just started, is going to ultimately deliver the death blow uh, to uh, that status. I think the amount of inflation that the Federal Reserve is going to unleash in order to try to uh, counteract this uh, financial crisis. I mean, people are still reluctant to call it a financial crisis. That's exactly what it is, except it's bigger in scale and it's going to be far more impactful than the 2008 crisis. And it's probably going to result in even more uh, aggressive and reckless monetary and fiscal policy. And this time, it's going to take the dollar's reserve status down with it. Are you holding dollars in your banks and perhaps storing them as cash in your lockers at home? If yes, perhaps you should worry a little. Yes, the dollar was an international currency present in the reserves of every country. But this is ending as the final death blow for the dollar is coming. And what does that mean? Well, dollars will be worth nothing, and people holding them will go bankrupt. However, to avoid that, top economists like Peter Schiff share a way out of this. If you are someone who does not know what to do with the dollars that will be worthless soon, you must listen to what Peter Schiff, chief economist and global strategist at Euro Pacific Asset Management has to say. Just to give you an idea, the return of precious metals is inevitable. Let's listen to what Peter Schiff is saying. Unless the governments bail them out by creating more inflation, which is ultimately how the bailouts are paid for. In fact, the Fed has already returned to Q on quantitative easing, whether they want to call it that or not. But the balance sheet is up about $400 billion uh, since this financial crisis began. And it's going to get a lot bigger in order for the Fed to postpone the pain of the crisis and socialize it into a different form of pain, which will be higher prices, because that is what's the substitute. So on the one hand, the government says, don't worry about your bank account. We're going to guarantee it. But on the other hand, you now have to worry about the value of the money that's deposited in your bank, because even though the bank might not fail and you won't lose your money, when you go to spend your money, you won't be able to buy very much because your money is going to lose its purchasing power. Currently, banks in the U.S. are under threat of insolvency. Since they have offered loans not being paid back, they are nearly bankrupt. Hence, people who have accounts with those banks are feeling fear of losing their money. However, Peter Schiff said that this is not the real threat. Since the U.S. government interferes with the free market, these failed banks will be given bailouts. But for that, the Fed has to print more money. Therefore, even if your dollars in these bank accounts are safe, they will lose value with time. Printing more money means decreasing purchasing power of the already available money. And this will continue as long as the dollar is worthless. The U.S. government might say the dollars in your bank accounts are safe, but when you spend them, they will buy you little things compared to before. This vanishes people's and even countries' trust in the U.S. dollar. If it is going to lose value forever, it's not something to hold. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos educating you about the changing economy and financial world. We want you to know what's important for your financial survival. Let's continue now. That's where precious metals like gold come as an alternative. Listen to what Peter Schiff said. Just like there's going to be a run on the banks, meaning people are trying to get their money out of the banks, they're going to be running to put it into gold uh, because no money is safe now in the bank uh, because either your bank is going to fail and you will lose your money or your bank won't fail because the government bails it out and your money will lose its purchasing power. So either way, you should withdraw your money now, but don't stick it under your mattress because it's going to lose purchasing power there, too. You've got to convert it to real money. You've got to turn it into gold. Now, if banks could offer you a high enough rate of interest to offset the inflation, then that might be an incentive to leave the money in the bank. But the banks can't do that because they can't afford it because they're broke, because they've already locked up all their deposits in long term, low yielding mortgages and treasuries. So they can't pay you enough to offset the loss of inflation, but they can't stop you from withdrawing your money. The problem is they don't have the money because the money has been lost. That's what happened to Silicon Valley Bank or Signature Bank. So as more people rush, rush to withdraw their money from banks and use it to buy gold, the Federal Reserve is going to have to print more money 
to enable those withdrawals, which is going to create even more inflation, which is going to accelerate the appeal of gold and cause even more people to deplete their bank accounts to buy gold. And then it's a vicious circle of, you know, collapsing banks and runaway inflation. Peter Schiff said people are prudent enough to see the dollar losing value. Already, they are finding alternatives. Therefore, soon, they will run to their banks and drain all their dollars to buy gold. It's the only option left. People know either the bank is going to fail, sinking their money with them, or the government bailouts will make their money worthless. Bailouts mean printing more money, decreasing the purchasing power of already available money. Hence, when people take out their money, they will try to hold it in the form of gold. People need to understand that today, gold is the only option left. It's something which has been here for thousands of years. It was valuable in ancient times, and it is the same today. Only its value has increased with time and will continue for eternity. Sinking banks cannot offer the same returns on money as gold offers. Neither does holding money feel safe as holding gold does. Having suitcases full of money isn't safe enough as it is to hold gold bars. Money's value vanishes when the government vanishes. But no matter what happens with the world, gold's value has always prevailed. And here's something to understand. Peter said that when people run to withdraw money from banks, the Fed has to print money. Why? Well, banks do not have the money. They have used it. So when you withdraw your money, it has to be printed, creating more inflation. This will hype people more, and more people will run to withdraw money, creating more inflation until the breakdown. So will we witness gold standards coming back? In other words, will gold and silver be used as currency? Well, listen to what Peter Schiff said about that. Absolutely return to a gold standard. I mean, a gold standard has been uh, the monetary system that has dominated through most of recorded human history. And I don't think that that's changed. I think we've temporarily experimented with fiat currency. The experiment is going to end in disaster and it will prompt a return to what works. And that is gold. And whether it's governments or the private sector, that lead the way, ultimately that's where we're gonna go. And we don't need governments to remonetize gold. Uh, the private sector can do it all by itself. In fact, gold was money in the private sector before uh, it became money in the public sector. You know, uh, It became money for the kings because that was the money that everybody wanted. That was, if you wanted to pay your guards, you needed to pay them in money that they could use to buy food. And the farmer wanted gold. And so that's what the kings uh, collected in taxes. They, they collected gold so they could pay, pay their soldiers. Peter said that gold, silver, copper, and precious metals had been used as currencies in recorded human history. They were indirectly used until 1971 when gold was removed from the currency's back. But that was an experiment that would lead to a disaster. Sooner or later, countries have to put gold standards back. Already, people and big investors want gold. They have started buying and holding gold. Inevitably, governments have to adopt that too. Peter said the private sector could be the first to use gold as currency, forcing the public sector to do the same. Earlier, people and merchants would trade in gold. Hence, kings and emperors also had to use gold. All this takes us to the dollar losing its international and reserve status. Listen to what Peter said about that. Shifting for quite some time. And if you look at the relationship between the United States and China, China is clearly the rising power and we are the declining power. Um, China enjoys an enormous trade surplus with the United States. China has the industrial capacity that we that we lack, that we we lost over the years. So uh, the real production and wealth creation is taking place over there. And all we're doing is buying what they produce and borrowing the money they save to pay for it. So I think we have this phony economy that has been propped up by inflation and, and cheap debt. And it's in the process of collapsing. And when the dollar loses its reserve status, that'll be the final nail in the coffin. And I think the American standard of living is going to plunge because the dollar is going to collapse and prices are going to soar. And we're not going to be able to import what the rest of the world produces. Peter confessed that China is a rising power while the U.S. is a declining one. The U.S. buys whatever China produces, giving it the dollars. In turn, China and its allies have been storing these dollars for years. And now, possibly, the BRICS is thinking about launching a new currency which has to be backed up by gold. But this will be quite bloody for the U.S. You see, in order to launch a new currency, China and its allies have to get rid of the U.S. dollar. The market will be flooded with U.S. dollars when they drain them, 
taking their value down to the ground. The U.S. will have hyperinflation, like in Germany, after World War I. Also, the U.S. could not import anything the world produces because nobody would want its worthless dollars. Every country will be accustomed to using gold, so accepting paper will be out of the question. That's why people today have to start holding touchable gold. What do you think? When the dollar's hegemony will be over and it will no longer be a reserve currency? Do you think you should start preparing for the dollar's death and hold precious metals as the new currency? We would love to hear your thoughts. Comment right below. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We bring videos on the economy and events shaping the future. If you are someone who loves to be prepared for the possibilities ahead, you'll love our channel. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.